Welcome back to the Marvel Movie Minute, a daily podcast which we disassemble a film from the Marvel Cinematic Universe into one minute segments and then examine it in obsessive and occasionally hilarious detail. I'm Kyle Olson from the Swashbuckling Ladies Debate Society podcast. Hey, and I'm Rob Cabosco and Kyle. Yes, sir. Hot mic. Oh. So, hot mics can be dangerous. This is kind of the part two of, of last minute's intro, right? It's one thing to flub. It's one thing to say something when you know the mic is on. It's another mm-hmm. thing to do it when you don't think the mic is on. Yeah, like just, for instance, off the top of my head, if you happen to be a member of a school board and you oh! hate parents... Okay, now uh, future, future maybe, people. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you shouldn't be doing that in a streaming format when you're actually streaming to the web. Just, I don't know, that's just random. I mean, I'm a writer, so like these right. things just pop into my head. I Whenever. Mean, that would never be based on reality. No one, no one in this age of Zoom would be that silly. Now, now, sweet listeners, wherever, whatever, whatever time you are listening to this, you may have recalled a story of the of the present day and the present day of this is uh february of, of the year 2021 <gasps> how dare you tell us <laughs> oh secret, time, secret secret we've got secret, secret. Time, now yeah. everyone's gonna be like holy crap when there's done okay for all we know in the in, in this in this future time that you're talking about this may have happened multiple times right this and and, and here's what happened we're talking about like in the world of zoom now because mm-hmm. of because of the things that are happening yeah people don't realize they're live or they're on and they say dumb things and then th- and then bad stuff happens yeah and, and you shouldn't it's not like that should matter you should just be a good person. Don't let the microphone determine for you to say good things. Why don't you say good things yes. all the time? Right. That's an idea. That's just a just a weird thought. Well, there into the world. so but now if you say to yourself, "Well, wait, present day, this is happening. This clearly has not happened in the past." Oh, hold on. <laughs> now the one that I remember, and when I tell you this, you're I know you're gonna you're, you'll have vague memories of this. Mm-hmm. Um, in 1984, during a sound check. Right before President Ronald Reagan was about to give a radio address to the nation, he joked the following words. My fellow Americans, I'm pleased to tell you today that I have signed legislation that will outlaw Russia forever. We begin bombing in five minutes. <laughs> do you remember this? Do you remember? I do. Okay. Now, it was ridiculous. From, from, from right? the great orator, it was so rare that something like this would happen. From like, There's some people who are just gaff machines, but like Reagan was so the great communicator, the right? Great communicator and all these things that he, in the, what he put out to the world. And and think about this, in case, for those of you who are not born before 1984, 1984, height of the Cold War. Yep. This was the full full concerns that the global thermonuclear war was around any corner, right? Things crazy things were happening, right? Crazy things always happened, but they were definitely happening uh, plentifully in the in the early 1980s. So this happens. He says this. It's not live. It gets leaked, and then the recording is out there, right? Goes out in the world. Well, okay. So here's the thing. Just rules for using a microphone. Number one, remember you're using a microphone. Correct. Number two. Uh, always assume it's on. <laughs> End of. There is no rule. There's no rule three. Just do. Just, just do that thing. Now, why do I bring this up? Because in this minute, we're going to realize that someone, a certain character, has a hot mic. They have a conversation with someone, and that's what alerts everyone in the audience that something's wrong. <laughs> yeah. And and maybe it's good because hmm, calamity is about to happen. But hot mics. Be careful. Yeah. There's something there's something here we'll talk about that some, some a certain character should do something that they do not. We'll talk about. That's right cuz uh despite right, the fact that it's all men on stage, the glass ceiling is about to be shattered here in oh. minute 97 of Iron Man 2 from 2010 directed to John Favreau. We pick up where we left off, which is the middle of a conversation between good buddies, Robo Pals, Tony and Rhodey. Uh so they're <laughs> having this conversation like uh, as professional superhero type people uh, of like what we need to do here. So uh, Tony had begun the sentence, you got to trust me. And then we pick up here minute 97 with for the next five minutes. <laughs> it's like, that's a simple ask, except that, uh, you know, they did destroy a house, uh, you know, at, at one point, uh, right. due to disagreement. Uh, so Rhodey says, yeah, I tried that. I got tossed around your house. Remember? <laughs> 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 Tony's like, like, okay, you're not wrong, but like, stay on focus task here. Focus, like, uh, we got, focus. Something's going on. <laughs> so Tony's like, listen, I think he's working with Vanko, and so instantly Rhodey's like, on the button, Vanko's alive, and so as this happens, we see something we have not seen before, which is now we have 
the UI. So basically, we've now gone into the helmets. Right. So this conversation going, takes. Yeah, we're not we're not doing like you know uh, suit to suit. Now we're going like like face to face. We're actually seeing Robert Downey Jr. and Don Cheadle uh, as as they're, they're talking back and forth, and we get to see the War Machine UI. So like now this is the essentially Justin Hammer designed. Uh, user interface, I would think, or probably one of his people more likely, because we, we know that he doesn't actually do much of the work himself, but probably two military specifications, because as you look at it, it looks like what you think, like basically like the the layout of a plane or uh, you know like the, their essentially their thing because you see all, most it's it's very green first of all uh, very flight oriented because you see uh, altitudes maps you see you know the wind conditions you see all those sort of uh, stuff that 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 basically Tony doesn't care about so he doesn't have in his but as a pilot these are all things that they usually you can steer by as so you don't be looking out the window essentially you know I think t- uh, Tony just basically flies by the seat of his pants essentially and you know uh, Rhodey flies by instruments. It's really it's it's great because it does take a big page from any type of heads up display you've seen in in aircraft from yeah. the last you know twenty years or so, especially during this time. So they have that green color. The, the green is not just there. Well, the green is picked for a particular reason to separate itself from Tony's, which we then see immediately because it goes back and forth between them in this reverse sort of point of view uh, point of view display. Yeah. But you're you're trying to uh, change that. And the other reason why they're using green, unless you're colorblind, because then you won't <laughs> see this. <laughs> They need to show that something is about to happen to his systems. Right. So they have to go from this sort of, you know, a green color, which, you know, usually means go, and then a red color, which will mean, ah, something bad has happened. So there's a whole reason why they've picked this. And yeah, there is differences. Like, it it definitely has the military influence, but in the lower, um, it depends if from the viewer, it's the lower right corner from the, Mm -hmm. from the wearer of the suit, it's the lower left corner. There, they do. Both suits have a similar. It looks sort of like a radar slash a uh, like threat awareness, or you know, mm. like your overall environment. And it is interesting to see how the the one in Rhodey's suit uh, looks more of like a wireframe when it goes to t- when you see Tony in the new Mark the Mark Six, it's like fully rendered. And I think that it's neat that in that one corner of the display there are similarities, and I think it's done in a way to show that. Yeah, no matter what Hammer did, t- Tony's suit is way more sophisticated than his suit. Yeah, and you like see it, and you see it compared. And I think that's nice that they have the interface. The what's in the other side of the screen, it's designed in a way where it looks so much more mechanical. Yeah, and utilitarian. Exactly. Yeah. And Tony's looks like version yeah. seventy five, yeah. like of a, of a very weird interface. You know, reminiscent of a lot of the other things he's done we've seen so far in the movie. Yeah, it's like, but it's I like love a, a monochrome screen versus like full HD three D. Exactly, and you can see that this one's got like menus that are embedded in a weird sort of like shape and interface. But what I love the fact is is that the design, the, the specific thing they did here in the, did in the design is to show these two sides of the screen have similarities on the one side to show the difference in technology and have the complete difference on the other side to show that, yeah, we're two totally different ways of looking at, at, at a UI and a, and a heads up display. Yeah. And so these, these were both designed by a group called the pixel liberation front. Uh, in the commentary, he refers to it as PLF. Uh, I tried to do some research on them and I think they are out of business now. I think they probably were subsumed into a larger, but they, I, I couldn't, I couldn't find much of their stuff. Uh, when I went to their Facebook page, which is still in existence, they have not uh, put out an update since uh, talking about their work on the 2013 film Seventh Son, starring Jeff Bridges, who was uh, you know in oh. Iron Man One. Uh, so I hope that they all have uh, great jobs and that uh, they got uh, part of a larger organization now because their their work is amazing. So I'm hoping that that, that is that is still the case. Uh, so if you know where Pixel Liberation Front is or what happened to them, please let us know. Uh, we, that, I would kind of like to know because I, I just want to know, give them their their propers and let them know that we are still appreciating their work here in, in ten years later. So uh, as they're continuing their conversation, uh, R- Tony then uh, leaves Rhodey uh, and walks over to Justin to try and get some information out of him. And so this is where he, I think he switches from broadcast to or from transmitting to broadcasting because then like now he's right. speaking out loud essentially, uh, and so. Uh, Justin is still celebrating, like thinking that like he's just made the score of a lifetime. He's yeah, and so Iron Man walks up to him, and Tony says, "Where is he?" And Justin's like, "What?" Tony's so like, "Where's Vanko?" And Justin goes, 
who? I mean, yeah. like, the thing is, it's... He's so good in this that it almost made me think, was this a reshoot? Because, like, was there a version of this where <laughs> Justin Hammer had no idea who Ivan Bunko was? Because he's so good at selling this, like, he's on stage with microphone. He's very aware of that. And it's like, uh, like he's, like, completely clueless about, like, I don't know what, who is this person you're talking well, about? But I have he, no well, idea. But he's also got the little bit of the, what do you want to call it, the curl at the end, like, who? Like, like, <laughs> I you know. I mean, like, I, it is so wonderful. We can't say enough how great Sam Ro- Sam yeah. Rockwell is in this role because he's being he's being deceptive. And one thing when when he when as Tony walks up to him, this is where I was talking about. Well, we can see that Justin has a microphone on. He's got one of those headset mics, like for performing yeah. on stage. You can hear they've done a great job here in the design. Is that you can hear Tony's voice now? It's like it's being projected from a speaker on the suit. Yes, there is a difference in the audible quality of it. So now you can see is like okay, he's speaking now to this person, and then here comes we have this conversation, and Justin is having this conversation where he's answering Tony, and the entire audience can hear him. Yeah, because he's wearing a hot mic, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, exactly. So Tony trying to be intimidating and says tell me and justin says what are you doing here man <laughs> what is all uh and so then before that can continue though then something happens so over in roadie's suit uh we get to see a new color has gone into his ui and that's red because uh, a bunch of cyrillic characters are now scrolling across the front of his his uh optics this is in front of his his site and uh he doesn't know what's going on so he says whoa 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 and then suddenly Suddenly, his uh, shoulder cannon comes alive and points itself at Iron Man. Uh, and Tony swings around and sort of gets into like his stance, his pose, um, uh, and says, "Like, and says, is that you? Like, basically, are you pointing that weapon at me? Like, are we, like I thought we were cool, man." Uh, and so we see uh, in uh, in then we cut over to Ivan, who's sitting in front of this guy. And first of all, he's got a pretty nice setup. For like someone yeah, who basically does. had to go through Hammer Industries and find something, and so, uh, maybe he'd been making this plan all along, so maybe he set up. But like, as a as a person who spends all days on computers, that's a pretty nice setup. Like multiple screens all mounted on these these nice brackets and everything. I mean, it's not totally super villain layer, but it's pretty good. Like to have all the your all the different screens set up uh, in in different areas where you can look in different places. I I really think that's pretty cool. Like <laughs> as you know for. Game recognizes game. Like uh, I gotta say, nice job on the on the layout there, Ivan. He uh, he clearly has an unlimited supply of toothpicks too. Uh, that of helps. <laughs> He's got or, uh, or just one really resilient toothpick. Well, yeah, or that. <laughs> um, okay, just one thing to note is as all yeah. this stuff is happening, we because. Um, because Justin has the mic and he's and he's saying like, "Hey, what's going on?" We cut to this really quick shot of Pepper in the audience and Pepper's with her furrowed brow immediately recognizing that hey something's up here like what is what is going on so we, we've got that yeah. and then like you said the interface it's awesome to see you know something's wrong like visually because all of this code now comes in is red yeah it's 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 glaring in in Rody's face and you can see the russian the russian is very clear there's one word in russian i couldn't figure out what it was not only was it reversed but i, yeah, I mean it's, it's 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 yeah it's something in white that basically is alerting like yeah this is happening one thing to note too about the design of this it's fairly well rendered where all of the graphics are reflecting in their eyeballs. Oh, really? I and that's that. awesome. Like, that's okay. Cool. Yeah. The, the fact somebody, the fact they took the time to do that. Okay. Just again, really well done. And then when, when, when Ivan activates, um, we see him on his screen, VTRB, which is the, uh, veritable, Oh, what's the VTRB? Threat response. Threat, threat response. <laughs> yeah. That's the variable threat response battle suit. Battle suit. Thank you. All right. We got the battle suit. Um, he's engaged it. And I lo- again, I love the design here. As soon as the, that is the, uh, what is it? The minigun, the M134. Mm-hmm. Um, as soon as it gets on, we see this wonderful little animation on Tony's heads up that kind of looks like the suit. And then in red, the gun shows up. And it like activates, like his suit yeah. is monitoring everything in real time. It has spatial that's Jarvis awareness. for you. It's it's awesome. <laughs> Where I mean, that's incredible to know. Okay, now that it's activated, this is what the threat is, and this is how we we deal with it. Yeah, it's really great detail. Yeah, I like the fact that Ivan House has his, his custom interface that is in Russian and English. So like as he's as he's going through, like you see Russian words and English words 
back and forth like on, on his screen like as he's going through um uh so roadie then like the, suddenly the suit has activated and is now targeting iron man so roadie's like no i'm not doing that that's not me i can't move i'm locked up i'm locked up and so then all of a sudden Oh, remember, uh, it's not just uh, two people on stage. There's a bunch of robots. Oh. All the drones wake up and suddenly take aim as well. Uh, and so Rhodey, realizing this, says, get out of here. Go. The whole system's been compromised. And so, like, Tony basically takes a second to look around and thing, and then goes, let's take it outside. And then, oh, whoosh, off into the air he goes. So he launches himself up, and then we find out there's a, sort of a, a, a windows, like glass top over it and then an open circle which is where he dropped in if right. you remember in the in the very opening minutes of this oh the beginning um, of the movie right beginning of the movie when Iron Man first shows up uh, he dropped in through that hole uh, and so now he exits through the same hole that he had dropped in from uh, originally uh, and goes right out the middle and then uh, everybody else comes after him. Now, I th- what I think is cool about this is when you see them all taking off. First of all, Hammer immediately le- jumps off the stage. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> leaps and into I, the crowd. Like, wait, oh. <laughs> and I got to tell you this. You got to slow this down if you, ever, if you yeah. can watch this and stop it. Because for the briefest millisecond, you see uh, uh, Justin Hammer's re- reaction. And his reaction is one of those things where you know where you go side eye and you're like, wait, oh. I got to get out of here. Uh-huh. He literally has the moment of where he's put two and two and three together. Yeah. And he realizes I got to bail. And then he does it. And it, you miss this completely watching it in, in regular speed, but it's completely there where he's realized. And I think at that moment, that's when he realized Ivan screwed me. yeah yeah i think you're right i I don't know i I don't know if he's that quick on the button like he oh no i think i think that's what he got it in the next minute i think he's still a little bit really uh hasn't quite figured all of it out yet uh but so we see iron man take off into the sky uh and then roadie immediately goes after him and once again we're gonna talk about the sound design because yeah iron man flies out War Machine flies out, and then the Air Force drones fly out, and all of them sound different. Yes. Like, they each have a very distinctive rocket sound as they they go off into the sky. And uh, they, so Iron Man has one sound, War Machine is very similar, but then th- when the Air Force drones go out, they sound like jets. Yes. Which is such a cool side design thing. I mean, like, like, like not just the hammer design. You know, like designed by the the sound designers that they probably used actual jet sound effects to do that to like to show the difference as they're flying. It's such a cool little detail. Uh, that's what's, what's fun about doing these kind of minute by minute things is like uh, he, he, taking a moment to appreciate that thing that goes by within five seconds. Well, and no, and and, and all the detail in this is that okay. So you know, Tony takes off, right? Yep. And when when Rhodey, well, he's not in control of this now. But right. as you watch everything, he takes off, and it's almost like a, a Saturn V rocket. Like, it's really, he's got these, obviously, heavy-duty thrusters that yeah. are putting him up. Well, why is that? And why is it different than the Air Force drones? The Air Force drones don't have a human body in them, number one. Right. Number two, you would assume that they are more. they are much lighter, because not only do they have the body, they don't have to protect the body. Yeah. So there's a much different composition, and Rhodey's Rhodey's suit is by far the heaviest thing, including Iron Man. Yeah. That's a that's a tank. That yeah. is that is designed to be a tank to protect the user, and he's loaded up because if they ended up putting every single armament that they said they were going to, <laughs> right. he's got more stuff on that suit than anything. So wait, I love that they've got that added look at. He's the slowest moving thing off the ground. Because, yeah, he's the heaviest. Yeah. And that's just... Uh, it's also a little homage to the first Iron Man movie because they they do the shot like from his oh yeah shoulders like his from his like, like from his like waist down as right. they like go all the way through and you see all the little things that we don't ever see again they never like give us that much time as like all the little pieces sort of go into flight mode right. essentially all the little uh, pieces of the armor uh, separate before he sort of you know lifts off into the sky uh, and then uh, even though there's a giant hole. Eh, they don't use the door. Not when you can be awesome and fly through the window. Uh, so all of the rest of the the Rody, I say the the war machine armor. It's not Rody doing this. He's just a, he's a a unwitting passenger here. Yes. And all of them fly right through all that glass and shatter it, raining down huge giant glass shards all over the audience below. You you know I've I've said this. 
when I watch this, every time I watch this movie, yeah. I, again, I, mean, I love this movie, but every time I watch this scene and all that happens, you know what I immediately think? A, a thousand people just died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because giant glass raining from the the sky yeah it, okay it, it cuts and bruises there were huge pieces of that no. glass that you see falling the, and and it's tempered glass we you know tempered glass is a type of safety glass it's de- it, and it's designed through chemicals and thermal treatments it's designed to like shatter like your windshield right and yeah and and you figure like if something architectural like this it's i'm certain it's tempered in some way i mean it's got to have some sort of thickness if you're putting it above people as as far as like a canopy or so it could be safety glass, which has the little extra lamination, again, like a windshield. This gets shattered. I mean, you see the chunks. Mm-hmm. You get hit with one of these from, I dare say, it's probably about 100, 150 feet. You're getting, you're getting sliced. Like, these people don't. There's a lot of people who get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say we don't. We don't. Have, we don't see anyone when they come running out. We don't see them <laughs> cut and bleeding. But yeah, they are. Uh, yeah, okay, and and not a not a spoiler for this. The, the one of the one of the one of the certain things that you have to suspend over the next few minutes of this movie is mm-hmm. in the real world. If any of this happened, thousands of people are murdered and maimed during what is about to happen. Yeah. I don't think they ever. Rec- I don't think they ever address that or recognize that or prove that to be true. <laughs> no, like, <laughs> like when they even talk about later on, they they talk about like the Sokovia Accords. They don't mention like this. <laughs> they don't mention like all the people that probably died here at the at the Stark Expo because there's no way. And it's trust me, it's not just the glass. We're going to get into it. Yeah, thousands of people had to have been killed and maimed. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> Oh, so they're so when they rocket out, like we 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 see them race out, like they you jet into the sky, and then it's almost like there's a cameraman on the roof because he they're doing this this, and I I could not find what this the style is, but basically there's this sort of style of filmmaking that they got was popular around this time. They used it in Firefly, they used it in Battlestar Galactica, and it's the idea that. It is a live camera operator, as opposed to composing the perfect shot. It's the idea is there's a person there who has to like he suddenly might miss it or he moves like so. It's it's sort of that that idea of like it has to. It's not it's not editing. It's it's sort of like a camera movement, and so you see this person like as it goes in there, then suddenly turn and like focus his attention on an observation lounge. Like there seems to be like this this um, in, in one of the round pavilions of the oh, tower. Oh yeah. There. There's all the yeah. way. So like it sort of like goes, oh over there and you get to then it sort of zooms in and you get to see all those people there. Well that'll become important later on. That it, like in the next minute we'll see why that was there. But it's setting it up for a future thing. Okay. But it's I, interesting because that they don't do a lot of that in this movie. Like that's not really John Favreau's style. But every once in a while this thing, thing something pops out like this that makes me think, oh that was just like a special effects person like wanted to do something cool and they went yeah that looks good okay uh i i didn't know i didn't even think about talking about this during this episode you just made me think about it that type of quick push zoom i don't yeah. I, and i i don't I, know yeah, what the actual term exactly is. i couldn't find it but that that has been used in obviously different movies and you know where this where this became a big deal i remember this was was when star wars episode two came out Attack of the Clones. Oh, okay. It uses in the Battle of Geonosis. That's, it uses again, this technique. Yeah, that's about the same time period, like that early early two thousands. It sort of started. It became maybe the a technology thing. was was the, I, to... exactly. I I think the the whole I think our our ability to do in CG environments to do motion blurs like that yeah. type of motion blur that became a trendy thing. And I can remember people talking about it in. Okay, I want to say. That's what two thousand one is episode yeah. two. We're, okay, yeah, I think so. I can remember people making a big deal about it because it was so jarring to see something like that in a Star Wars movie. Yeah, because it's a very it is a very modern, even though it, it, it really isn't. I mean, like it, right. it, we technologically we could do it now. That's actually they're trying to emulate an actual camera operator. So they're right. out, exactly. the, the, the person like, you know, like the, the person who's suddenly something goes, they swing the camera around and then find the thing. And so they, they might miss part of it because they weren't looking in the right spot. Well, that's interesting because the reason why I think it's jarring is because it almost breaks the fourth wall. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because the, the, the and that was the, the issue with star Wars was, was that when you do something like that, you're you're bringing attention to the fact that that would be quote unquote a camera operator, right? That there's someone who's actually well, like some, looking yeah, around. Well, yeah, and that doesn't. Why would you do that? Yeah, it, it's interesting. It's an interesting creative choice. So yeah, 
Uh, so that, like I said, that'll be, we'll talk about more about why that's important in 98. So, uh, Rhodey is still like, uh, you know, not liking this at all. <laughs> he screams out, no, no. And then as, as they're, as you see, then the chase is on essentially. So Iron Man is, is flying as fast as he can. Rhodey is right behind him. And then all the Air Force drones are right behind them. Uh, and so they're all racing uh, through the sky. Uh, so Tony says, Jarvis, break. And that's where the minute ends. And oh. that sentence. So that's where minute 97 comes to an end. So we'll not find out the end of that sentence until minute 98. So as we're talking about that scene with uh, camera operators, mm-hmm. you know, these days, all of us are camera operators. True. Because we all have cameras. And what do we do with those cameras? We take photos. You know who produces some of the greatest photos online? Who? The wonderful folks at the Next Reel on their, on their Instagram account. That's true. Over yeah. at at the next reel, uh, we have been doing our best to post our own magnificent pictures to add to the lovely images that are displayed on Instagram. So we would like to join your feed of carefully cultivated, beautiful images. So if you follow at the next reel at Instagram, we will be there. With, we can. We're talking about not only this show but also all of the next reel shows, and we're trying to do it in as aesthetically pleasing a manner as possible. Oh. Nice. So add us to your feed and, and we'll like you more. Well, we'll, we'll brighten your day. I mean, that's, if anything. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's a Rob guarantee. <laughs> well, I mean, usually <laughs> five days a week. Five so days. we'll be back here for minute 98 as we, uh, as the chase continues uh, and we'll find out what more property damage can be done over the course of New Jersey. And will even anyone even notice? I guess we're going to find out. Enough said. Bye.